Okay guys, so this is a bonus feature. So I'm just if you want to do this you can do this. If you do not if you don't want to you don't have to. So when we add a transaction, I just want to add a date with that transaction, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we want to do is have another input for the date. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to so let's go to add transaction. Let me close this terminal, make the code a bit bigger. Okay, so go to add transactions.js, the component, copy this uh, input for amount and paste it in. And over here instead of amount we're going to have date. And instead of value for amount we're going to have a new state, so we'll do that later. And we're going to have for the type, instead of number we're going to have date, so there's a date type input. Okay, so now let's see how that looks. As you can see it looks just like the others because of the styling in app.css. So it looks pretty good, so let's, let's go ahead and actually add the date to the transaction. Because right now we're only adding the amount and the text in Redux, so we also want to add the date. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. And first thing we want to do is make a state for this date. So copy this. Or I'll do it again just so you understand better. So const and then the state, so which is going to be the date, and set date to change the value of date. And this is equal to use state hook from React. And inside these we'll, it will put the initial value, which is uh, I'm just going to put an empty string for now. And instead of value is equal to amount, we want to change that to date. And instead of set amount, we want to change that to set date. So when the value of the input, the data input changes, so on change, sorry, on change, we'll be receiving an event. It will pass in an event, and we'll receive that event and get the value of the input using event dot target the value, and we'll pass that into set date, and this, that will set the date in the state. So now we want to add the date to to this object of the ne of the transaction so let's go ahead and do that so we'll give this object uh, a date and we'll set that to the date of the, in the state so this date and we're calling that a transaction from redux passing in the new transaction and uh, this goes to main this is this a transaction function is being passed in from main.js in containers and as you can see over here and this passes in the transaction to redux just like i had explained before so the only thing we need to change really is inside reducer.js in the add transaction. So when we add a transaction, well actually no, we don't need to change this. this is, we, we're receiving the object and just adding it to the array. So this should be good. But now we want to actually display the date with the other transactions. So we need to go to transaction.js. This is the transaction component where we are displaying the text and the, uh, the amount of the transaction and also the, uh, and also the delete button actually. So we want to also display the date so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put in a HR tag over here. And let's refresh. Oh, we don't need to. Let's just add, a, add something. Give it a date, a transaction. <laughs> so this styling issue is caused by the HR. So I have a different idea for putting in the date. So I'm going to delete this HR. And uh, I'm just going to put the date right next to the amount and I'll put some spacing between it. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to go inside the span and make a new span for the date. And I'll do transaction.date because that's what we called it. So transaction.date, option shift F on Mac or alt shift F on Windows to make this code neater if you have installed the extension that I told you about, ES7 React Redux. Okay, so let's go back and yeah, so this transaction.date should be displayed right next to the amount now. So as you can see, but it's uh, I want to put some spacing between them. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to give this transaction date some margin right. So margin right, and I'll give it um, let's say five. I'll explain this one second. I just give it the right amount. Um, eight should be good. Yeah, eight is good. Okay, so basically standing with React, you can do it this way. You can use CSS just like I have in app.css, but uh, React styling is pretty much just like CSS. So in CSS, you'll do margin dash right in, uh, in Re uh, which is called, I think, the kebab, kebab way of doing this, and uh, kebab case, I think. And with React, you have to do camel case. So you put a capital instead of a dash each time you have a new word. And in CSS, you'll do uh, eight pixels, so eight p px, but uh, you can do that as well in React, so as you can see, it still works. 
but uh, you could just put 8 and React would automatically put pixels with this. So as you can see, it still works now. Okay, so now we are displaying the transaction or the date, but let's say I have a, another transaction, for example, rent, and I'll put this as minus 10, and I'll give it a date of, for example, 12th of October, a transaction. Now, as you can see, I want to sort these transactions by the date of uh, by the date it was made so by the date the user has actually picked actually not made so this one should be on top the SSS because it, it was made on 14th of October and this was 12th of October so this should be on top and I want to sort them by the date so I'm just going to add another one um, just put some text keep that the same just change the date change it to 21st transaction so it should be sorted by 21st and then 14th and then 12th because 21st is the newest, 14th is the second newest and 12th is the oldest. So let's actually sort them by the date. So to do this, we want to go uh, above the return and when we receive the transaction, uh, sorry not here inside transactions list because over here we are receiving all the transactions. So to do this over here above the return, we want to sort the transactions that are we are that we are receiving from the main.js, which are the transactions from Redux. So to do this, we want to do transactions is equal to transactions dot sort. So this is a method by uh, this is a method from JavaScript, and this sort would, uh, would, would we can do a function. I'm going to do an arrow function, and we'll receive A and B. So one uh, so we'll receive two transactions, and then we can. Uh, check the difference between them. So we'll do b.date minus a.date. Uh, so also actually we need to return this and uh, we need to put these in, we need to create a new date using JavaScript. So new date and make these dates because we are comparing dates not numbers. So we need to change these two dates. So new date and new date for these because they are dates. So we're comparing dates so we need to make them into dates. And uh, we need to return these, as you can see we are returning them, and this will return them to the transactions. So basically what we are doing is we are checking if b.date is, uh, so b.date minus a.date. If this returns a positive number, that means b.date b .date is bigger. If it returns a minus number, that means b.date is smaller because uh, let's say b.date is 10 and a.date is 5, just not a date, so let's just say it's a number. So 10 minus 5, that is 5, that means it's positive, and as you can see, b.date is bigger, which is 10. So that so because it's positive, that means b.date is bigger. And if it was, if b.date was 5 and a.date was 10, 5 minus 10, that would be minus 5, and that would mean a.date is bigger, because it's a minus number. So this would just sort, uh, and uh, the sort method would do all of this for us. So we don't need to worry about that, and this would uh, assign, uh, assign that new value to assign the sorted dates to transactions and we are mapping mapping over them and returning a transaction component for each one so now let's actually go check this out see if it's actually being sorted so as you can see 21st of october then comes 14th of october then comes 12th of october and now if i add something new which before it would go at the top regardless of the date um so, if I, but I'm going to put it as the, the oldest date, so it should be at the bottom. But before, it would put it at the top regardless of the date. So I'm going to put 6th of October, which would be the oldest. And as you can see, it puts it at the bottom because we are sorting the arrays, the array of dates by uh, the array of transactions. Sorry, by the date of the transaction. So another thing we need to do is, as you can see, if we add the transaction and put some text and the date, and click add transaction. So yes, it's sort, it's sorted and everything. But uh, as you can see, the text remains in the input. We want to put the input back to nothing. So, and the amount and the date as well. We want to put it back to uh, the default value, which is zero, which is like an empty string for the text and the amount is a number, so it's going to be zero and not everything. And the date is going to be nothing. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back to the code. And if we go to add transactions.js, where we are adding the transaction, where the form is, as you can see, we have values equal to text and values equal to amount and values equal to date. So the value of the input is also equal to the state. And to set the, so basically, if we set the state back to nothing, then the value of the input will also set back, will be set back to nothing. So let's actually do this. So when we add a transaction, we want to add the transaction, yes. And then we want to set everything back to nothing. So we'll do set text, sorry, one S, set text, and then we'll put it to, uh, back to an empty string. and set amount and we'll put that back to zero 
and sorry one s over here as well and set date sorry one s and that will be set back to an empty string as well so we'll just set them back to their default values so and as you can see the input is linked to the state using the value uh, property of the input and so whenever the state changes the value of the input will also change so let's save this and see if it's working so if we go here and if I add something, so add another thing and change the date, add transaction, as you can see, this is all set back to nothing. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this class and, and please check out my other classes and thank you.